I got a message that a very dear girlfriend of mine lost her pup um, last night. And this pup is a member of the family. Good morning, everybody. I got a message. That... And uh, she's just heartbroken right now. I have a beautiful furry cat named Astro, whom I've had for 11 years. And, uh, you know, as much as we tell ourselves that we're willing to experience everything in life, there are some things that are just, I think, a little tougher, a little harder to experience, like the loss of a beloved, whether it's a pet, a person, you know, a beloved home, a beloved car, a beloved job. My prayers are with Deborah and Cody and Frank and Frankie for their loss today. Lesson 152, the power of decision is my own. <laughs> Very interesting how this starts out. No one can suffer loss unless it be his own decision. No one suffers pain except his choice elects this state for him. No one can suffer grief nor fear, nor think him sick, unless they are the outcomes he wants. And no one dies without his own consent. Nothing occurs but represents your wish, and nothing is omitted that you choose. Here is your world, complete in all of its details. Here is the whole, here is its whole reality for you. And it is only here salvation is. You may believe that this position is extreme and too inclusive to be true, yet can truth have exceptions? If you have the gift of everything, can loss be real? Can pain be part of peace or grief of joy? Can pain be part of peace or grief or joy? Can fear and sickness enter in a mind where love and perfect holiness abide? Truth must be all inclusive. If it be the truth of all, accept no opposites, no exceptions, for to do so is to contradict the truth entirely. Salvation is the recognition that the truth is true and nothing else is true. This you have heard before, but many do not accept both parts. Without the first, the second has no meaning. But without the second, is the first no longer true. Truth cannot have an opposite. This cannot be too often said and thought about. For if what is not true is true as well as what is true, then part of truth is false. And truth has lost its meaning. Nothing but the truth is true, and what is false is false. This is the simplest of distinctions yet the most obscure, but not because it is a difficult distinction to perceive. It is concealed behind a very vast array of choices that no, do not appear to be entirely your own. And thus the truth appears to have some aspects that belie consistency, but do not seem to be but contradictions introduced by you. As God created you, you must remain unchangeable with transitory states by definitions false. And that includes all shifts in feelings, alterations and conditions of the body and the mind, in all awareness and in all response. This is the all inclusiveness which sets the truth apart from falsehood. The false kept separate from the truth is what it is. Is it not strange that you believe to think you made the world you see is arrogance? Is it not strange to think is it not strange that you believe, to think you made the world is, arro is arrogance? God made it not. Of this you can be sure. What can he know of the ephemeral, the sinful, and the guilty, the afraid, the suffering, the lonely, and the mind lives within a body that must die? You but accuse him of insanity, to think he made a world where such things seem to have reality. He is not mad. It only madness makes a world like this. To think that God made chaos contradicts his will, invented opposites to truth, and suffers death to triumph over life. All this is arrogance. Humility would see at once these things are not of him. And can you see what God created not? 
think you can is merely to believe you can perceive what God willed not to be. And what could be more arrogant than this? Let us today be truly humble and accept what we have made as what it is. The power of decision is our own. Decide but to accept your rightful place as co-creator of the universe and all you think you made will disappear. What arises to awareness then will be all that there ever was eternally as it is now. And it will take the place of self-decision, self-deceptions made, but to usurp the altar to the father and the son. Today we practice true humility, abandoning the false pretense by which the ego seeks to prove its arrogance. Only the ego can be arrogant, but truth is humble in its acknowledgement and acknowledging its mightiness, its changelessness and eternal wholeness, all encompassing God's perfect gift to his beloved son. We lay aside the arrogance, which says that we are sinners, guilty and afraid, ashamed of what we are, and lift our hearts in true humility instead to him who has created us immaculate, like to himself, in power and in love. The power of decision is our own as we accept of him that which we are and humbly recognize the son of God. To recognize God's son implies as well that all self-concepts have been laid aside and recognized as false. Their arrogance has been perceived and in humility, the radiance of God's son, his gentleness, his perfect sinlessness, his father's love, his right hand to heaven and release from hell are joyously accepted as our own. Now do we join in glad acknowledgement that lies are false and only truth is true. We think of truth alone as we arise and spend five minutes practicing its ways, encouraging our frightened mind with this. The power of decision is my own. This day I will accept myself as what my father's will created me to be. Then we will wait in silence, giving up all self-deception as we humbly ask ourselves that he reveal himself to us. And he who has never left will come again to our awareness, grateful to restore his home to God as it was meant to be. In patience, wait for him throughout the day and hourly invite him with the words with which the day begin. Conclude it with the same invitation to yourself. God's voice will answer for he speaks for you and your father. He will substitute the peace of God for all your frantic thoughts, the truth of God for your self-deceptions and God's son for your illusions of you. Lesson 152, the power of decision is my own. What Magdalene has to say. Greetings, beloveds. The decision, the choice, the power that you have, beloveds, lives and exists within the mind. You have it every moment, beloveds, at every instance, the choice, of which direction you will allow your life to flow. When you embrace love, when you say that love is my guiding principle, you free yourself from the choices that you have made for anything less than love, anything other than love. You release sadness, you release regret, you release shame. You release all the circumstances that you have constructed within your life to be anything other than love. And in that moment, beloveds, when you choose love first, when you say love is my guiding principle, when you say, I will see everything through the eyes of love, when you say that I am as God created me, 
regardless of all the evidence that you have amassed to the contrary, when you make the choice for love, when that decision is made by you, the only thing that can occur, beloveds, is for you to have the experience of the love that you are. And it is your free will that has given you the option to choose love in each and every circumstances. So when you go back through the myriad of thoughts within your mind and you say, this person harmed me, I was mean to this person, this circumstance was brutal, this circumstance was fearful, this circumstance was painful, understand that in that moment, beloved, you have chosen to see other than through the eyes of love, through the heart of love, through the mind of love, through the will of love. And yet when you can call out and say, Holy Spirit, great comforter, help me to see this differently. I have been mistaken in my thinking. I am allowing myself to see pain instead of love. Come and abide with me. Come and reveal yourself to me. You're making a choice to be aligned with what you truly are. You're making the choice, beloveds, to be aligned with God. For you and God are one. You are as God created you. And God has created one miracle and one miracle only. And that is the Christed being. And that is the beingness that you are. So allow yourself to come to this recognition, beloved ones. Allow yourself to truly know that where God dwells, where God is, you are. God lives in you and as you and through you. And that is the truth. And when you consciously choose to live within this mindset, within this life set, there is an experience that occurs in which everything lines up in the universe. When you commit yourself truly to understanding, to knowing, and to living, then the, the power of your decision is for you to choose the pathway of love, the pathway of mastery, and miracles occur, and things that you have feared and things that have given you heartache and heartbreak. They fall to the wayside, beloveds, for you are truly dwelling and existing where God dwells. God lives within you. And you find the place where God lives. And you say, how did I miss this door? And you have the key in your hand and you say, how did I forget that I was the one who locked this and I can unlock this as well? And you come to see, beloveds, that your life is a li living embodiment of Christ. Salvation comes to you in the form of truth. And everything that you desired, everything that you wanted is granted to you. For love withholds nothing. Love grants all to all beings. You are the embodiment of the Christ. You are the love that God is. The kindness, the sweetness, the gentleness. Express your love to all beings. And know that God loves you. Everything is being orchestrated in your favor. Everything is being done for you. It is the saying that life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. And then you come to the recognition and you see the truth that God has orchestrated everything for you to remember, for you to come home. It has all been granted to you from the heart and the mind of God. For you share that mind and you do have the power of choice. You do have the decision within yourself to be able to decide for God, to be able to decide for love, to choose love, to choose to let go of that which causes you pain, to choose happiness, beloveds. Hmm. This is the gift that God has bestowed on all. The blessings of love, of freedom. The world around you is a gift. A gift indeed. 
So allow yourself, beloveds, today to receive the gift that God has given you, the gift to choose, to choose as God would choose, to love as God would love, from your hearts and from your minds with grace. Know that in each and every moment of your beingness, you are guided by a force of love that is so profound, so magnificent. And you are indeed swept up in this tide. In fact, you are the tide of love. So allow yourselves, beloveds, today to come to know and to understand that only love is real. And you are that love. And that is the reality and the truth of you. The decision, the choice that you make for love, that is indeed the truth of you. So make that choice today, beloveds, with ease, with grace. Know that you are blessed. Know that you are beloved. Know that God is where you are, as you are. And that is the truth. All blessings to you, beloved ones. We will speak with you again. <sighs> Thank you all so much for being here. Much love and we'll see you again tomorrow.